Good evening. I'm host and guy loudly pointing out anachronisms at Epcot Center, Dr. Ike Bloom. Tonight, my conversation with author George R.R. R. Martin. I'll ask him how he pulls off the seemingly impossible, being a world-famous wealthy fantasy author who isn't transphobic. This is Smart Talk Tonight. George, I want to thank you very much for being here, and I hope it's okay that this interview will not end in an orgy of blood and violence. <laughs> now, A Song of Ice and Fire is nearly 4,300 pages. When you're writing, do you ever get to page 3,800 and think, wait, who the hell is Goron again? You know, um, oddly, no. I have a... Um, Maybe I'm a little deranged, but I remember all these people from Westeros and Essos with uh, the, the weird names. Um, on the other hand, I constantly forget people in, in real life, but I will remember a minor knight who was in the entourage of Jamie Lannister from the third book. I don't know what that says about me, but probably nothing good. In the world of Game of Thrones, who's been the hardest character for you to kill? My guess is fish-eyed warlock number seven. Well, the Red Wedding, where a number of people died, was probably the hardest thing I ever wrote. I'd been writing about those characters. Uh, that was in the third book. I'd been writing about those characters for, uh, you know, a decade or more um, in both of the previous novels and much of that third book, so it was very hard to write that particular chapter. Why do you think uh, your work has connected with such a vast audience, uh, considering the endless supply of riveting fantasy novels like my own unappreciated work, Alsinoth, The Realm That Stinks? <laughs> you know, if, if I knew why it was so successful, I would have done it 20 years earlier. I think I would write stories even if they were not published, because I, I think it's something I've been doing, as I said, since kindergarten, since I uh, learned how to write but um, telling the stories and then putting out stories for people to read and enjoy, that's a big, big part of it. Like an actor going on stage, and maybe they'll throw rotten fruit at him or maybe they'll applaud, but you, you want the audience and uh, telling the story for people to enjoy. That's a big part of the motivation. Uh, I will point this out. You didn't even bother to ask why Alsinoth stinks. The ego on this guy. I, I, I didn't. Would you like to ask me? Certainly. Why? Well, well, uh, George, if I could sum it up in a sentence, I wouldn't have written 3,200 pages on it. Now, any chance you could give me a blurb for Alsinoth, The Realm That Stinks? Uh, to make it easy, I've drafted a couple of straightforward, generic options for your consideration. Okay, uh, Alsinoth, The Realm That Stinks, is the finest novel ever written, compared to Ike's epic saga, my life's work amounts to nothing. Also, I heard he's an absolute dynamo in the sack. <laughs> uh, that, that is so nice of you. And actually, I think there's a backup option if that one doesn't work. Yes. In a word, wow. In another word, wowza. In several words, wowie, wowzers, and Philippi, Gibberty, wow, wow, Kazooie. I think we will go with the first one. Now, in House of the Dragon, an elderly feckless king's inaction leads to civil war. On an unrelated note, you endorsed Joe Biden in 2020. <laughs> will you support him again in 2024? I will. I definitely will. Well, you've said that Game of Thrones was inspired by the War of the Roses. Right. If you ever do a show inspired by modern politics, I have some ideas for characters. Are you ready? Sure. Okay. Joe Biden, Lord Ancient the Cotton Candy Hair. Okay. <laughs> Chuck Schumer, the adjacent Never King. Uh, all right, all right. Donald Trump, sire of strange-faced adult son. Yeah. All right. Uh, Clarence Thomas, the freak-wived king of frown. Okay. I'll We've also you. have Tucker Carlson, Caucasus, the replaceable. Oh dear, yes. Excellent. Now, fans are upset with you because it's been a staggering 11 years since you published a book in the A Song of Ice and Fire series. 
let's just bang this thing out right here, right now, <laughs> just the two of us. Uh, Joplin, can you please bring in the laptop? All right, here we go. Page one. I, I did page one already. Fine, page two. Okay, uh, the main guy wakes up. He gets his sword out of the closet or whatever, chops up some breakfast. Then, hmm, uh, wh uh, what does he do next? Well, he would have his dragon roast it if he's a dragon rider. You don't want uncooked breakfast. You know, George, I don't think that's what the main guy would do. Um, let's go ahead and remove the laptop. Do you know the author James Patterson? I, I do. Well, he's published 22 books this year alone, and luckily he's a dear friend. Uh, let's get him on the line and see if he can get you some tips on how to be a successful author. Hello? Uh, James? Yeah? James, old chum, it's your old pal, Dr. Ike Bloom. Now, James, I know you're cranking out your third book of the day, so I won't keep I you. I don't crank. I, I, I very carefully, it carefully, carefully uh, uh, turn these books out. It, it's not cranking. Now, I know you are, let me say, carefully crafting out your third book of the day. That's good. Yeah, there we go. So I won't yeah. keep you here long. I'm here with a struggling writer. Uh, let me uh, revise mm. that. Truly pathetic, uh, who is having trouble <laughs> meeting deadlines. Uh, do you have any advice you can share? Uh, yeah, well, how, how long is the, uh, what, what, what kind of deadline are we missing here? It was 11 years ago. Uh, Eleven. Uh, wow. Okay. <laughs> I've heard of writer's block. This is more like uh, writer's constipation. Um, I actually have the opposite problem. I suffer from writer's diarrhea. No need to insult diarrhea. Do you use a computer or type, or how do you do? How do you uh, work? I do. I use my my faithful DOS computer with WordStar. Okay. Well, try something else then, because that's not working. <laughs> so, um, how many pages do you have so far in this eleven years? Uh, like uh, 1,100, 1,200, something like that. <laughs> <laughs> 1,100. <laughs> yeah, it's not I mean, done yet, though. Number. Well, then your problem I, I solved. Another, uh, your problem yeah. solved. Another 400, 500 You break pages. down the 1,100 pages <laughs> into three books. <laughs> you, uh, you submit them one and, you know, and, 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 and uh, one, one each year. You submit three of the, you know, one book per, per year, and uh, they'll be happy. And, and suddenly you'll be ahead of schedule. Now, uh, James, one last thing while I have you on the line. Would you be willing to blurb my new novel entitled Alsinoth, The Realm That Stinks? Uh, just something simple like, I could never dream of writing a novel this vital, even if I had a spare 20 minutes. <laughs> <laughs>